Welcome back, everybody, to the Selling with Love podcast. What I want to discuss today is actually not usually something that would be very focused on sales, but is actually so important for us to get clear on why we're selling and how do we start fixing the biggest problems that might be holding us back from selling. If you're familiar with the Selling with Love concepts, one of the first loves in selling is love the impact. And it goes beyond just the statement of loving the impact because we do some exercises. Usually we go deeper into, you know, what is our impact for ourselves? What's the impact for the clients we sell to? What's the impact for the greater community or world whenever it is that we sell? What's the difference that we're making? But if we really want to be motivated in the way that we sell and we really want to make sure that we are excited, we are selling effectively and we're not holding ourselves back is where I want to expand on this impact and introduce you to the concept of Ikigai. Now, there are debates on its origin. A lot of time it's, you know, associated to Japanese concepts about the reason for being. And there's actually some debate on exactly what the origins of the Ikigai is. But for the purpose of the exercise here today is we're going to be asking ourselves four questions. And you're going to be able to answer and rate yourself from 1 to 10 on each of these questions and a 10 being a perfect score and a one being the lowest score. And the purpose here is that the closer you are to 40 in your score, the more you are really in your optimal state, in the right business, in the right career, in the right activity and selling effectively in the process. And if you see that one of these categories is scoring a little lower, you might be able to pinpoint some of the things you might want to do to maybe improve your product, maybe change who you serve, maybe get into a different industry, or maybe learn about sales in the process. So what are the four questions? Well, the first question you have to ask yourself is what you love. Is whatever you're doing right now for your business what you love? Do you love the business that you're in? If you're listening to this podcast, just take a moment to answer this for yourself, one to 10. What you love. Are you excited every morning to get up and do what you're doing because it's a joy for you to do it? Do you find yourself not hesitating to just do these activities that are not just about the service that you provide, but building the business around the service that you provide or the product that you create? Because especially if you're an entrepreneur, it's not just about the actual service you deliver but it's around the fact that you're running a business around the service that you deliver. What is the rating you have for the love you have for this? All right, that is the first question. Take a moment, write down that question's answer. And now we're gonna move to the second question, which is what you are good at. It's a different question than what you love. It's what are you good at? Is what you're doing something you're actually really good at doing? Because you could see some scenarios where you might be really good at something, but you might not love it. For example, you might be working in an industry that you absolutely don't love, but you're really good at doing it. And so many people lose their souls. If if you've read my book around selling with love, the fear pride paradox speaks to this kind of state, especially when I use examples saying like the disgruntled person maybe working in Wall Street, that they're really good, they're making a lot of money, but they're, they're like effective at selling but their passion's not there. They're not proud of the sales they make. And so there's a rating we have to give here again. Are you doing something that you're good at? It's independent of what you love. Are you good at it? Say you're a coach perhaps or a consultant. Do you really bring results when you do what you do? Rate yourself from one to 10, 10 being a great score and one of course being a lower score. The third question within this Ikigai process is what the world needs. Are you doing what the world needs? And of course, if you are familiar with the selling with love concepts, you would have seen this in the impact category. When I talk about, do we know the impact of what we're doing is actually doing for the world? Is it making it a better place? One of the things I've done when I was at Mindvalley is we actually talked about this concept of humanity plus, like when my existence and what I sell and the business I create, does it make the world a better place? And does the world truly need it? So I'll give you an example of what a one might look like from a perspective of someone that says, um, you know, smoking is bad and I don't think it's a good idea to introduce more smoking in the world. So imagine that I would use my sales skills to really 
get more people to smoke. And I'm fascinated when I'm in Southeast Asia, especially here in Indonesia, where I'm seeing massive ads are still up, showing pictures of athletes with a cigarette brand and showing how you can be your best. And I'm like, are you kidding? That's crazy. We don't need more people smoking. It's causing stress on the healthcare system. It's destroying people's health and ending their longevity. So, okay, that would be a really low score on what the world needs. So ask yourself, for the business that you are in, is it something the world truly needs? Now, this brings us to the final question, which is what you can be paid for. Can you be paid for doing the work that you do? Is it a place where the fact that you solve this problem when you sell it, people are excited, enthusiastic, and throwing money at you like it's nobody's business and you are filled your pockets with cash because the world is ready to pay for having that problem solved in their life. Quick example for that might be somebody who's uh, looking to have the most comfortable luxury experience of flying across continents. And as a company, an airline company that offers, you know, a private airline flight for an extremely wealthy individual, they are willing, wanting, and will pay for it to give them a private jet experience from going, let's say, from North America to Europe, they can be very well paid for because there's certain individuals that are willing to pay that price. And so look at who you serve, what business you're in. Is it something that you can be paid for? One to 10. 10 is you have no problem charging, very healthy profit margins. You're living an amazing life and the money is flowing. One is you're doing something, yet guess what? People aren't paying you for it, and now there's a problem. It's causing financial stress, which in your life. The goal here is to give a rating for each of these from 1 to 10 and to add up all the ratings that you've gotten. And with this information, you can give yourself a score. For those of you who are already part of the Facebook community, we're going to be posting a link to this episode, and I would love to know what your score is. And the fact is, is you can start looking at how to improve this score. Look at the, the all of the different aspects and decide what is the one area of focus that I think I could make the biggest difference in? Whether that's finding something you love more. I mean, if you're already in a place where you're not really loving what you're doing, there's some big questions to ask. If you're in a field that you're maybe not necessarily good at, there's some obvious things you can do. You can seek additional training. You can practice more so you can enhance your craft. And so that becomes an aspect that you can be like, you know what? I could become the best at what I do. And that would improve my excitement about doing it and will probably make you love it more, probably be more helpful for the world, and you'll probably get paid more for it. So if you're seeing that, if it's not something you're good at that you're doing right now, but there is the possibility for you to get additional training, might be something for you to pay attention to. What the world needs is an important one because you want it to be purpose aligned. You want it to be something that actually makes a positive impact. And the fact is, is if it's not doing that, it might make you drag your feet a little more whenever it comes to actually selling it. That makes you actually want to be excited to get involved in doing it. So ask yourself those questions and make sure that you are working in a field because there are plenty of problems that need to be solved in this world. And that if you focus on making that part of your mission, then that is going to be an extra motivator and make you feel so much better about being in this business. And I have to admit, the last one is the one that most people who might be listening to this podcast being involved with the Selling with Love methodology might be struggling with. I'm taking a wild guess here, but what you can be paid for is something that we really need to investigate. And a lot of what I teach when it comes to Selling with Love is to make sure that for the people who are doing something they love, they are good at it, and it is something the world needs, can be paid for it. And one of the greatest ways to be able to improve that is, that's right, I'm biased on this answer, but you got to learn to sell. You got to learn to craft an amazing offer. You got to get over your resistance and your fears that what you're pitching is going to be causing you insecurities. We have to overcome that. And luckily, you are listening to the right show where we're going to give you some of those answers. We're going to support you on your journey and you're not alone on that journey. And if you are having that struggle of being paid what you are worth when it comes to what you sell, then be sure to be a part of the community. Get involved. Share. We are here to support you. This is why we put the podcast together. And we want to make sure that you can score as high as possible in your Ikigai. And if there's any ways that we can support you, 
We have both free and paid resources that can make sure that wherever you are on your journey, you are well supported and you can make sure you are well paid so that if you're truly doing something the world needs and you are loving it and you're good at it, let's make sure that you have a complete circle within your Ikigai. If you like this concept, you want to see it, what it looks like when you have maybe one of the legs of the stool that's not as strong, we're going to post up an image within the community so you can actually go post your score. You can see what it looks like as a concept. It's a beautiful one. I wanted to highlight it and share it with everyone here. And of course, if you enjoy this show and you enjoy listening to this podcast and you haven't left a review yet, take a moment to leave a quick review. Highly appreciate all the feedback that we receive. And of course, with this concept, find your purpose, get your reason of being clarifying, apply the Ikigai concept, and of course, go out there and sell with love.